Hi, everybody. I'm Corey. I'm the Dungeon Master for Opportunity Roll. I'm here with the group. Say hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Let's go ahead and start introductions. Let's go ahead and start with Ize. Hi, I'm Ize. I play Martha, the Dwarven Cleric. Rodeo. Hello, I'm Rodeo, and I play Caster, your Grave, El- uh, grave Cleric Azamar. Jace. Hello, I'm Jace, and I play Soot, your human uh, Eldritch Knight. Alex. Hi, I'm Alex, and I play Callisto, your tiefling druid, who is continuing to not have a great time. Dust. Hello, I am Dust. I I will be playing uh, the tiefling sorcerer Moment, who is very much probably in danger. And last but not least, Z-Man Ultra. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm playing Zare, the human monk, who is slowly unburdening himself, but also growing more fondly attached to his comrades and feeling their pain and just hoping everything is getting better soon. Now, we had this this nice, lovely recap, so I'm going to leave that to the recap. Um, let's go ahead and jump back in to where we were. Now, we had everybody down below. Right now, it's it's cold. It, there is this this kind of mildewy smell that kind of accentuates throughout this this like dungeon esque area. We've just spoken to an entity who has revealed himself to be Kodia. Um, judging by the history that we know, though, Kodia is the name of the person who founded the first crystal. Um, who, well, well it um, helped kind of bloom most of the races and most of the the, the next generational boom of humanoid and non-humanoid races in this world. Um, it is said, and I'm, I'm recapping some of the history for the crystal, that those who find the crystal can sometimes find themselves in great power, wealth, or even eternal youth. Um, so, I mean, this could be somebody named after the crystal. This could be the person of the crystal. Though there is one thing, in the last game he did mention that he's been down here for quite some time. So let's go ahead and open that up with Dust and Jason down below. And uh, I think we had uh, Zer uh, kind of somewhere in the mix between uh, Zareth. And then a lot of other people stayed up in the actual church itself. Feel free to take it away. So you said your name was Codius. Uh, cool dear, yes. As the one who found the crystal, the very first crystal. I can neither approve or deny. How long have you been down here? Uh, you're going to see him kind of uh, through the darkness. You'll see like a small silhouette. He'll kind of roughly like touch a wall and you'll see his fingers kind of uh, read over a couple of like scrapes and stuff. Yeah, you'd see about five thousand years or so. Is it? it it's common knowledge to how long the crystal fell, right? Roughly, yeah. It, is that how long the crystal fell, or is that what we've been told? Yeah, it has fallen about five thousand years of now. At least the first crystal. The first crystal. Why are you down here? Safer for most people, and for me. But to say that I'm also not a uh, a prisoner would be uh, a fallacy. Prisoner from for who? Why is why is it safer for you and a bunch of people for you to be down here? It's hard to explain, really. Um, magic's changed since I've been down here. And, um, well, the best way to put it is I am tasty to monsters. And, um, they can kind of smell me. But they can't... I mean, they... There are wards here. 
At first, this was a safety precaution, and then somewhere in between, I guess I became a prisoner. Who imprisoned you here? The high priest. Uh, high priest who? Um, I don't know. It, it His physical appearance changes every so often and he goes by different names, but the person, the personality and sentient being continues to be the same. Do you know what, what's happening outside of this cage? Not a clue. For all I know, the world is still filled with tribes. Monsters still roam the earth, and dragons have become a nuisance. So you know, you don't know that another crystal has fallen? A, a what? Another crystal landed not maybe a few weeks ago i mean i felt something but uh, no i didn't know how did you get down here nobody hey. but the high priest knows about this place the the passageway was left open i we my friends and i followed a hooded figure I think you're in danger. By this high priest? Whoever is here trying to keep my secret. Pretty sure it's strange for a human to survive 5,000 years. It's my best guess. Yeah, the, the, this whole entire situation is a little strange, if I'm, not, uh, if I'm honest. I agree. But... I don't think it's right for you to be kept down here. I think we need to get you out of here. I think it might be safe for everyone. Though I am a prisoner, I think. I don't want to put anybody in danger. But you're just content to live here? To live in this darkened hole? I think intent is a different word that I would use. Um... I would say for the better, well, not just me, but for everyone else, even if it is not my wish to completely stay like this, I, again, I don't want to put anybody in danger. How do you know? How do you know you'll put people in danger? The last time I was on the surface, they demolished Hansom. Monsters came from all over. Can I can I make a history check see if, uh, if there's any knowledge of that of when that happened or? Sure. I, I guess the better question is: Would that be common knowledge that that happened from five thousand years ago? Probably not. Yeah. Fourteen. I would say that Tantum has had its fair share of strange attacks, but nothing that really stands out. I mean, most. Most towns will have creatures that wander from the wilderness, uh, maybe into town. Kind of like a bear will wander into like a town in Nebraska or something. Yeah. But, you know, other than that, nothing really stands out. Then again, from what he's talking, it could have been anywhere between like 5,000 years ago. So. True. What? I mean, I guess the, the 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 big question is, what is your connection with the Codius crystal that that's out in the lake near Tansom? I'm afraid that if I tell you that, it might put you in danger. Well, I mean, I'm already in danger by being here, so what's a little bit more danger? It put me in a difficult spot. I don't want to put you in any more. But if you're not going to leave without the answer... I'm not. It's prolonged my life. I cannot die. So, the rumors about it are true. 
Oh, to a point. It does grant power, but it comes at a cost. You watch your friends and family die before you. You don't necessarily become stronger. And no matter what you do, nothing will end it. It's a curse. I am to be a witness of something, but I was never told what. Uh, Chris, did you give the name of the, the, the woman you've been talking to, the crystal lady? Did you, did you tell us what her name was? I did get it. I never told it to anyone. Um, she no. seemed, she was a drow, right? No, the, the, oh. not the, the woman oh. in the crystal. Ar oh, not Arwen. yes. Arwen. Yes. Um, uh, Soot and Zer um, put that out in the non-disclosure part of the, or the disclosure part of the, uh, the talk we had. Okay, I just want to make sure I wasn't saying it when I didn't know it. Yeah, but uh, yeah. he'll he'll say to to Cody, he says, "Does the name Arwen mean anything to you?" I do not know that entity. Although, there is an entity you should know about. The High Priest does come and visit me, but he doesn't go by any other name but Rasputin. Rasputin? At least to me. Okay. Uh, then, on the subject of names, does the name Solemn mean anything? Yes. How do you know that name? Uh, apparently he's he uh, like inhabiting a body that my group has run into before. So he's made it into this world. What is Zolom? It's only a story I heard when I was a child. But... There is an entity of darkness, one of nothingness. He was here before all of creation, before any of the worlds. He likes quiet, and it disdains anything living, for it disturbs its slumber. It has given itself the name of Zolom, but it comes in many forms, or other forms. It's like the boogeyman of my time. It's a creature well known for powerful destruction. And all it wants to see is the end of everything. But, again, that's just a child's tale. I don't know how much of it is true. Well, I've always found that tales have some semblance of truth in them. Just, just one more name, and then I'll, I'll leave. I'll leave and let you know. Uh, let you get back to your solitude, Babaton. I promise you, it's only for your safety. You can keep yeah. promising that, but I don't believe that. Believe what you wish. I only speak from the heart. You mentioned a name named Babaton. Yes, I have not heard of it. Okay, it must have been after me. Moment will turn his back to uh, Codius, but before he leaves, he will say, "Well, you may believe it's for your safety, and maybe, and it may be, it may be for the safety of it all. But wouldn't you like to see how much the world has changed? Wouldn't you like just to, to go out and see the world?" Oh, hey, but if it means others' deaths. It is not worth it. But that isn't that not a risk to worth to, to just see? You don't know that for sure. Let me put it this way. 
say you had a lever in front of you and you could pull that lever and know everything about the world. But in pulling it, you would kill thousands of people. I would not pull that lever. It's just who I am. Fair point. But, uh, but once again, you don't know for sure. But you will not change your convictions. So I should probably get out of here before this danger that you speak of from this high priest or whoever comes and f wonders why what's going on and he will start to walk up the stairs you'll just hear kind of off in the distance like a, a farewell farewell to you too I will say this though if I can help it it will not be the last time we meet Sarah's going to take Moment's hand as he, like, emerges from the darkness and sort of, like, guide him back up the stairs as Moment's talking back down into the, uh, into the abyss. Relieved that his friend is still alive. <laughs> I thought you were a happily married man. This this could have implications, you know. Not married yet. Uh, anyways, uh, I boy, do I have a a lot to tell the group. Let's get out of here before we get in trouble, and more than likely get kicked out of the city. We did break rule one. Uh, uh, so, yeah, uh, we've uh, we've already broken a rule. Let's go before this rule before we were found out. Technically, it's rule three, Corey. No, oh, true. Yeah. Rule one and two are like be kind to others and help around or bullshit whatever, and then then it's don't go in the basement. That's fair. Uh, if you don't have it, go ahead and earn inspiration for remembering that. Thank you. Listen, I know my hometown. <laughs> so, I love the mental day. image. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to kind of put a little bit of um, kind of flair. As you guys left from downstairs, you'll see the statue itself will have embrazened, like bluish kind of shined leathers, and it will shift from the right to center again, closing off the doorway. That's that's after we we've gotten out, right? Correct. Okay. I tried to hit that fly on my arm and I missed it. Now my arm hurts. I'm very upset about it. Speaking of that, as soon as like we leave, I'll look to Castor and it's like, you know what? Yes, that I did just get on to you about doing exactly what I just did. And I will, I will, I will not be on your case as much. Castor will nod. It's and then he right. will translate it to Callisto in Infernal. It, I, I was... Oh, you go ahead. Okay. I was gonna say, is, is Castor still carrying Callisto? Yep. Cool. Cool. So, who went in there? Because no one came out except for you, so someone opened it. So who, presumably when they came back out, it would have shut. So who went in there? But they're still in there. Or they could be in here. Caster is going to do a quick Eyes of the Grave and a perception check and look around the room, see if there's anybody hiding about. I... Sure, what do the Eyes of the Grave do? They let me Scopes. detect. Uh, they let me detect um, undead. Basic. It, they let me basically just detect undead. It's like the paladins, the are the like the sense good and evil, but it's just undead. Okay. Dust. Continue. I'm sorry. I I have much to tell, but I would feel much better if maybe we went 
somewhere else or even go to our guild hall because who boy that that was a there's a lot which just dropped on to me Corey, i have a question for you all right yes is our guild hall the same way it was in last season where we put a key into something and it opens up into it like it, has, it, does, it doesn't make it the, something else does it yeah, it, it kind of opens, it makes it like a TARDIS, but it doesn't give you like an outside, there's no grounds or anything. Okay, so um, you could put it in like a hotel room door. Yes, it just cannot be functional and no one can be in it whilst it moves. Okay. It's all that. right, Dust. Um, I think by the looks of it, it seems... Dust! Like a... Oh, sorry, moment. I'll restart that, because <laughs> I've been trying to say it. <laughs> Um, it's all right. Moment. Um, by the looks of it, it or the the seeming of it, uh, it might be the case that we were meant to see that or hear that, whatever you have to tell us. It just is so coincidental. I. Maybe, but I still would feel better if it was somewhere else besides here. I'll second that because I don't know what you know, moment. But I, if someone wanted us to see that, we don't know who, and it's a little suspicious right now. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, to the I just want to do the guild hall on the cart. Is that simple enough? Thanks I'm going to nod. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cut to Guild Hall, I suppose. <laughs> okay. So you guys will walk through town. You'll hear the crickets kind of chirping. You guys will turn that key. The door will open. And you guys will have kind of like a larger uh, guild area to, to kind of chill in. Um, I'm working on trying to find that map. I had it somewhere. But until then, um, it's pretty much uh, two to three small rooms off to the side, a main gathering area, and a kitchen. Um, nothing is stocked. There is no food. There's no water. So that's up to you guys to fill through. Um, but entering even inside and closing that door, you'll still kind of hear those, those crickets and, and kind of like cicadas just kind of chirping and, and buzzing just outside. Man, do I miss our guild hall from last season. That was so cool. I love the snowy grounds. The snowy grounds and our robot butler. It was pretty cool. Um, I guess, yeah, Caster would probably go... Are we having a meeting? Is that what was said? Do we have a meeting area? Like a big hall or something? You would have like kind of like a main entrance slash living room area. But nothing like a big hall. There's like chairs and couches in it. No, no furniture. Um, maybe, oh, no furniture. maybe a simple table and like four wooden chairs. One sit crisscross applesauce in a circle, everybody. <laughs> so it will just stand. <laughs> uh, uh, Caster will sit with Callisto propped up because she can't walk or stand. He's not just going to drop her on the floor and then stand up. Moment will stand, and he will like, start to explain everything that he had had seen and talked with with Codius, but uh, and tell everybody the whole the, what he what what he saw. Dear, dust, dust it's Godia. Godia, I'm sorry. Words not good. Can't speak. You're fine. I can't speak either. So yes, there is a person down there named after Codius who's apparently been there for five thousand years. I think you mean that he is Codia, and Codia's crystal was named after him. And you believe everything he says at face value. He was trapped there. What what purpose did he have to lie to me? Sometimes when 
people are insane, you put them in cells so they can't hurt other people. Insane people could make up ramblings like that, especially when they come from a hyper-religious town. But his ramblings, if that's what they were, about Zalem seem to be quite accurate from our other sources. And he seems to be quite the good person by the way he speaks of Zalem. He also seems to share a bond with Arwen, which we all share. Makes Even though he didn't know her name. Makes me, we didn't know her name either until she told us. Almost makes me think that he might be the missing member of the Brotherhood. Or at least a possibility. Since he felt the crystal fall, didn't know what it was, just like all of us did. Did he say why he was down there? And Castor will sit up a little bit straighter. Or did we hear lightning? Yeah, it's it, you hear a small trickle of rain just outside. Uh, he said for his and everybody else's uh, safety, he seems to have a certain scent to him that attracts monsters. And the last time he was above the uh, on the surface, it. They destroyed Tansom. And he's down there willingly. He says he's is willing, but he... he the, the word I gave him was complacent, where he, he said he's not complacent, but he's... He feels it's best for him to be there. So he's resigned to it because he knows it's best. Yes. Even though I tried to tell him... What was that, Martha? If if he thinks it's safer, it sounds like, especially if last time he went out, Tansom was destroyed. Um, I don't know. I would agree with Martha on this one. I don't. If he wants to be down there and he feels he's a danger to himself and those around, then I wouldn't want to free him. That's no way to live. He's, he's just a cage animal. Everybody can choose their own way to live. And if he's chosen it, then what are you to say that it's no way to live? What if just there the... was a way to remove him from his prison, but keep him safe? He has Martha. been touched by the crystal. There are some supernatural properties about him that has caused this attraction to the monsters. There must be a supernatural, or there could be a supernatural way to prevent that attraction. Even if there is, I have no idea. I could think about it. Like I think if I know any magics that would stop that, but off the top of my head, I don't. And we can't just ask people for help. No, that makes it more difficult. Did so you ask I Arwen? There was a reason. I, that's not a bad idea. It's been 5,000 years. Maybe crystals learn things like humanoids do. Maybe there are other crystals up there waiting to fall. May I point out that last time we freed something that had been trapped for a long time, it wasn't good? He has a point, dear. Well, fair, but it doesn't seem fair that you were the only one to get to release something. That really isn't how this works, honey. And you took quite a great deal of offense to me releasing that something. Yes, I know. I'm a hypocrite. Well, stop. It's not very orderly of you. You see Callisto just roll her eyes from the other side of the room. It, You're not at the other side. I, I, You were gone. I said I sat down so it propped you up because I'm not going to just throw you on the floor and stand up and have a conversation with everybody. I appreciate that. You see Callisto roll her eyes. There, There is also another point to be brought up, though this is a little bit of a ways away. 
if that is what became of whoever discovers the crystal, what will happen to us? He's oh dear. if if what they told me matches up, he's still drawing power from the crystal and keeping it. Basically, where do we have plans to keep it? Uh, I think that depends. That was on the docket as to what we do with the crystal. That's kind of a uh, we'll cross that bridge when you come to a situation. But if I one of us discovers it. Will that person become immortal? Will that power be split amongst all of us? What is... We have to consider that as a possibility as well. I don't want to live forever. I don't know my own answer to that. I, I just wanted to bring that up so that it would be on everyone else's mind um, in the future. Maybe we need to ask him more questions. I think that I may have passed. The door, that passageway closed. We have no idea how to open it. And I know the people here. Um, we don't stand much of a chance of breaking in and smashing through it and not meeting resistance. That would be deadly to all of us. Especially Walk. with that being the third rule of the city. The third and final rule of the city. I wonder what would happen if we brought Arwen to Kodia. Again, how do we bring anything to Kodia if he is beneath the church in the basement, in a passage we can't get to? Given time, um, the church is open through the day. I could study the magic that seals it to see if I can activate it. If possible. Right. You're you're saying. Right. Yes. Jason, I, may I ask why? I thought you wanted to s s see Matthew. That was the whole I've point. Close to death now. A few times. And there's a part of me that wonders if just living the life is better than knowing sometimes I've been given a gift part of me doesn't want to squander it I understand but don't you worry I'll get I'll get Maddie here I promise funny out of game thing caster points at the wanted posters for Matthew hanging up and dancing <laughs> We probably are going to run into some of those. But back into the sea. <laughs> the, the more we talk about it, the more it seems like we're going to end up back here again. So let us keep that in mind. Yes, and Caster, you know, he'll look a little uncomfortable and he'll be like, I, I don't feel good breaking in to the church. This place treated me well when I had no one else. There's always they the me. asking the high priest if he did let us in to see it, he might let us in again at the proper time. I feel like that's a bad idea. The the one thing I could I, that seemed really to stand out was this high priest seems dangerous. And I don't, I really don't think we were let, let in to see this. I think this was more by chance than anything. One thing that strikes me as strange is the way he talked about the high priest changing over the years and yet somehow still being the same person. Maybe he too draws from the same magic of the crystal. Could I do an arcana check on that just kind of in general, like changing bodies but keeping the same personality sure could i also roll maybe not arcana but maybe religion i'm not sure yeah um each will give you some information depending i'll on roll of medicine to throw on top of that okay you could not that whoa no no it's just a nine, it's a nine. Uh oh 
I just always have toggle advantage on, which just doesn't make sense anymore since the way we do advantage, so I'll just toggle it off. So for the listeners, um, so it got a 15 for Arcana. There are ways of, of prolonging life. A few kind of, kind of intersect with this whole idea of maybe uh, looking different, but at the same time, they're kind of rare and hard to get a hold of, but possible. But from what you have, the information you do, it's hard to narrow down anything. Not impossible, just difficult. Um, a religion of 13, there are definitely ways of prolonging life. Not all good. Um, but again, with, with that information, hard to tell. With a medicine of nine, there should be nothing natural that does things like that. And can I roll a history to, uh, on the high priest? Like, is it a, f- has it, has the high priest always been like in a family? Like, is it? Did you say something sure. about, um, can you, can you just repeat it? And then depending on what so- relays, I might make a check myself, but I missed it. Sorry. <laughs> uh, on sets, um, there is magic that can prolong life and, and kind of alter form over time, but there are like a handful, maybe seven, eight, maybe 13 options. It is hard to narrow down um, with, without study. Can you all hear me, by the way? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, moment with your history of 16. Um, I mean, there are tales. Uh, most of them go within legends. So it is, from what you think, maybe possible, but it. Can, it, they're also attached to like fairy tales and stuff like that. So, though the power would feasibly be there, it's not natural and not common. And is it with a fifteen? You would get the same thing as Sud. I figured. <laughs> Worth a shot. It's. This now, what what's our plan now? What what do we do next? I I like to look into that's that's a small lead. If we're going to look up things about the crystal and all of that, well, we're researching that. I can look into um, essentially that lead that the crystal gave us because there's certain magics that can. Change, change your body, but keep you alive. And, and if we could figure out what that is, that could maybe give us some leads or something, help us decide what to do. Wait a second. I just realized something. Have we told the authorities about what happened at Wolf Pass Forest? Did we also oh, hear we scream? Here. We arrived. We, did. we arrived quite late. Though. Uh oh, God! If Soot hears a scream, so it's like. Busting out like straight up, oh, yeah. laid man yeah. towards the scream. So is Caster. Same as moment. On the way. Oh so, dear! Oh, oh goodness! Okay, she's uh, scampering. <laughs> there's been a lot of action, and you know, you guys are used to kind of hustling it to this this big kind of scenery. But as you guys run out, and the rain is kind of like pattering against you guys, and you're you're kind of heading towards the sound. You're heading towards the main chapel. This very very tall, several stories tall tower. And at the very foot of it, at the front door, seems to be a farmer, who has taken hundreds of feet, of fall, to his death, at the front door, of the chapel. Oh dear. Unfortunately. Two handmaidens have come across the body. Caster will put down Callisto and uh, run up to the scene. And uh, he knows it doesn't usually work, but he's going to try and see if there's any little tiny shred of life left in this man. Uh, While Caster's doing that, so it's going to kind of run up close and look up to see if they can kind of see anything. Okay. Give me as, a medicine and a perception. As Caster does this too, he's going to place his hand on the wall right by the man and, and cast light so there's more vision so he can see better. Even though he has dark vision, he'd like bright light versus dim light. Okay. That's a four. Uh, that's going... I'm going to use my inspiration. Okay. 
uh, with a perception of four for soot. It's hard to tell, but it, there kind of looks like there was a figure for a few seconds at the top of the building. Oh, but no uh, details. Can I also make a perception? Ooh, I could fly up there. You may, I but I wings. think you might miss it in the time that it dips back. Okay, uh, just, just, just to try. Medicine uh, of twenty. You go ahead and roll. Uh, let me go ahead and get Caster caught up. Um, with a medicine of twenty, this man is not long for the grave. You can make his passing less painful, but even magic has its limits. So even if I like pour a bunch of level two spells in, won't do anything. You can get rid of the pain, but at this point he's got so much bleeding, so much broken. Yeah. There's really nothing that will save him. Uh, he's got maybe 30 seconds. Caster will tell the handmaidens that are screaming quickly to go fetch some guards. And uh, he will do his best using magic to help ease this man's pain. And he's going to, if the man can become conscious at all in that quick 30 seconds, he's going to ask him quickly, you know, what happened? Um, so, in, in we're going to come back to that for a second. We got a perception of a 15 from moment. Now, you're not going to see anybody up top. There's going to be no figure for you. But you'll see this this fabric kind of waving in the wind and rain at the very top of the chapel. It doesn't look like it's meant to be there. For the man, uh, you'll hear, uh, I don't know. Uh, he was uh, in here trying to complain, <coughs> complain about some noise. And I was thrown off. It went black. Did, you didn't see who threw you, did you? It was... It was, it was black. Uh, oh, dear. Oh, man, if we level up, I can speak with the dead and nobody uh, knows. So it's gonna look at Moment and just say, Do you know how to get to the top? Does Caster hear that? I'd say. I, I mean, you guys are kind of in a group. I will say the handmaidens have already run off like you had asked for them to. Uh, uh, Caster will say, I can get to the top. I uh, see something Caster, up there. be careful. Yeah, I'm I'm just, do what you can. I'll, I'll meet you up there. Uh, Caster then, will do it. Say, I'm going to pop your wings. Yep. All right, let me get you a sound. If they here. see you up there, honey, they might think you pushed them off. We have witnesses here saying that they saw the body before we showed up. I think that's a okay. pretty uh, Also, could I ask, is this the dude who was complaining about us? Yes, it yes, was. It, it absolutely was the dude who was complaining about us. That's why I bit my lip when he said that. I've, uh, I've gotten another person killed because of me. So, uh, Caster, there is something new for your wings. Yeah. You'll see them kind of gleam at first, and then they're going to go dark. And you're going to see your feathers from these wings slowly fall off, revealing leather bat-like wings. You've got a different deity, my friend. Your powers are coming from a different place. Kester isn't like this. Do, I, I hate to... I'd, I'd say so it's probably inside looking for a way up, but do the rest of the group see this? Up to you. Okay. I mean, uh, you could probably like call it out, point it out. Moment would have followed Soot, so he didn't see it. Doesn't see it either. Martha you'd was talking to Caster, so you'd probably oh, notice that there isn't there at all. <laughs> Caster doesn't cute. have time to pay attention to this. Callisto noticed. So but flying can't up. Really do anything about. But you're good. I cut you off. I'm sorry. Um, flying up. It won't take you long. Uh, you'll probably reach there about four or five minutes before uh, soot and moment two. Um, the roof is empty. There is a hatch that leads down into the main stairwell. And there is... So there, they've, they've got these like scarves slash um, tapestry robes uh, for most of the followers of the crystal. And 
over top of that, you have basically this 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 really long kind of decorative scarf with the the symbol of the crystal on the bottom, like shining. And it it's just kind of hanging there, waving in the wind. Uh, Cast, Caster won't move it, but he'll he'll notice it. Um, quick out of character question for you, really quick, Corey. Yes. I don't know if this will change what you just did, but um, the the wings don't come from his deity that he worships. They come from the deity that made him. Yes. Okay. But they can also be influenced by certain factors. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Cause I was like, just wanted to make sure that was clear. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, I fly up, I land in the tower. I see a cloak. That's just kind of hanging there. Or is it floating there? It's not really floating. It, so think of there there being like this this small like point, like a, a stone, like you see in the old towers or castles, yeah. where they'll have like cuts out cutouts, and it's just on the edge of that stone, kind of fluttering, as if the breeze can't free it from the stone. They're on the way up for those inside. It's quiet. Most people are in the bedrooms. In fact, most of the dormitories for people who live in this chapel are closed. Uh, you won't see any lights. Most people are sleeping at this time. Uh, but at the very, about two, two floors up from the top, there is unfortunately a handmaiden who is deceased. Um, she seems to have unfortunately had uh, damage done to her throat. So Caster will see that. No, that's uh, for the people going up. Not oh, that's the people going up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Only inside. I was, I was looking okay. up what the top of the castle wall is called. It's a parapet. Parapet. Thank you. Um. So, anything else up in the top? Can I like do a look around really quick? See if anything's. You may. Yeah, you can go give me an investigation or a perception. Nat 20 on my perception. Um, there is a shoe print, uh, kind of muddied, uh, about size eight. Other than that, there's really nothing else. Kester will notice that and remember, uh, remember it to tell the guards when they get there. Um, is there a door or anything like for just, uh, what, just what kind of like a, are there? Is this just the hatch? Just the hatch. All right, so I'll open the hatch if it's not already open. It is currently wide open, but kind of looking down, you'll see the stairwell, and 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 it kind of gives this like really low slope, so you can kind of peer down about a step or two. So you'll probably see soot, and and moment, um, looking over the body. Okay. Uh, Caster will shout down, looking down to soot. Uh, the foot, there's a footprint up here leading down. Um, did you see anybody? We didn't see anyone. Uh, we could use your uh, medical expertise. Uh, I'll come up there and see if I can find anything specific, any other clues other than a, a footprint. And so we'll just start running upstairs. I think my, my wings would still be active, so I'll just kind of jump off and then flap myself at the okay. stair. So okay. we'll notice that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do your wings are doing this weird thing. So they'll, they'll kind of grow more feathers, but you'll see them kind of slowly like flake off a bit. Like it's trying to restore itself. Um, on my way down, I'll, I'll throw up a detect magic and look around and see if I can't see anything. One second. So... Um, I'll let you guys choose. Who would you like to go first? Do you want to continue upstairs with Soot, or would you like to continue with um, Caster? I, I know this may sound weird. I'd like to do Soot first, because I'd rather do old information than new information, than new information than old information, like double back, because I <clears throat> I'm not going to assume Soot will succeed. So I'd rather just get that old information out of the way first. And then we can speed things up and have uh, Caster discover new things. Actually, I, I did actually want to join Soot, if that was possible. Um, in my current state, am I able to go direwolf form? 
Yeah. Okay. I'm going to turn into a dire wolf. And can I sniff the body and see if I can get any scent of sure. anybody that might have killed him? And then, like, like from the back of the coat, somebody pushed him off. Give me a quick nature check for that. Sure. Um, so we wanted to continue with Caster, right? No, it was Soot. soot. I was going to say, oh. after I've got that scent, I will follow Soot. Okay. So, heading up to the roof again, you've got the rain kind of pattering down. And as it does, you're going to see, like, the water start to hit this footprint. And it's going to start to, like, become diluted. Um, so, so what, would you, what would you like to do? Like, what exactly um, are, you, are you looking for? What, what's the plan? Uh, honestly, I'd like to basically search around to see if there's anything else that I can see. Um is how big is the area that rain is getting in through? Like, is it, if soot takes off their shirt, cause soot is not wearing armor right now, uh, would they be able to like block off the rain from getting on that footprint? Potentially until the shirt gets kind of saturated. That's fine. So we'll do that as much as they can. Um, and then do I you have like, a shield. You I, could throw I your do. shield over. Yes, I have, uh, I believe caster's old shield. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'd put the, the prop the shield up to some degree, use the spear if need to, um, and then kind of leave that alone. Uh, because I don't want to mess anything up with it, but start to look around the top floor to see if there's any scuff marks, to see if there's like any signs of struggle, any like claw marks, like if the person that got pushed out the window tried to grab the window first or something like that, there might be you know, any signs of anything that is what Soot will be looking for Okay um, Go ahead and give me a quick investigation Okay Let's Can see. I give him advantage? Um how? Or should I roll separately or I was going to um, say You were, you were downstairs and he's You were downstairs yeah, he's, and he's up so you're going to take a bit to get up to him. He went to the tower oh, okay. top. I apologize. Yes. Got it. Yeah. Um, the nature of a 12, though, you do get the scent of something. It's definitely not like an animal or person. It's more like a spell component. And it smells like... Um, like rotten eggs. What? Oh... Okay. Um, for the investigation. Oh, we haven't. Oh, I didn't. I didn't roll it. I'm so sorry. I went to open it up, and then my brain just immediately. Yeah, I can't roll well tonight. Baby. Five. Try relogging. <laughs> you gotta um, load. There's really not much more than you can see. Just the footprint and and the the fluttering tapestry. Slash scarf. Um, moments also with the body. Can I make a perception to see if I see any footprints beside that are either leaving the the stairway or going a different way than we went? Go ahead and give me a perception. Let's see here. Go oh, six. six. You're only going to find one set of footprints, which seem to be this gentleman's leading up into the chapel. Um, I'm a little confused because we got a lot going on. Uh, what do we want to catch up with next? And what scene do we want? It would be a uh, caster doing detect magic and a med medicine check on the body, I believe is what's next. Cool. Cool. So, Caster, in casting this Detect Magic, you are going to see a mixture of both illusion, uh, magic kind of mixed in with enchantment, and transmutation. Can you repeat that? What were they? Uh, you were and going where am to I seeing it? it? Uh, kind of throughout, like, like a wispy movement. Um, so, it's like a trail um, from up the stairs, up to the roof... And then it just vanishes. Um, it is a mixture of illusion, enchantment, and transmutation. All right, who's in the stairwell? By I think the body. just you and 
you and one other person, I think, because moment. Uh, moment and moment, and then Callisto will will pass by you and will form. Uh, Caster will start tending to the woman, but he will also turn to moment. Uh, moment, do you know how to sense magic with your eyes? Uh, I, I having finally noticed that Caster's wings, he he won't say anything, but he will take notice of that. Uh, let, I may. Trying to look if I have any detect magic spells. Well, the spell would be detect magic, yeah. And I know that. I, unfortunately, I don't. I do not have any. I can. I can try to see if I can sense it just normally. Can I roll an arcana to see if I detect anything? No, no Caster will be. Uh, Caster's like, um, whatever it was went up there and then disappeared outwards. I can't see past the stairwell. So can you go check while I tend to this woman? Oh yeah. I get you. Uh, he'll he'll go out and look past the stairwell and see if he can see anything. And Caster will roll a medicine check on this woman, see if he can't help her too. Maybe he can close her up and jam some blood back into her. Unfortunately, it seems that her death occurred probably about 50 to 20 minutes before you even got there. Damn. So uh, yeah, that's what a medicine of 21 will tell me. Uh, Real quick, hate to interrupt. Two two questions. Is this the church we just came out of a second ago? Uh, yeah, it's just all the same large okay. uh, crystal. How, how long ago did we come out of there? I'd say probably like 30 to 40 minutes ago. Okay, noted. Thank you. Are we here in this? No, it's, it's just to kind of set them spooky mood. Okay, I was about to say you're you're freaking you're doing it. You're freaking me out. Kester will run back out, um, run down the stairs, or probably just jump and fly down, and then okay. uh, come out the door and see if any guards have showed up yet. Yeah, there will be uh, two guards speaking to the handmaidens, uh, both in full plate, a helm, and a spear uh, with a crystal set as the uh, the actual plate itself. Nice. Um, Castor will look to them and say that there was another murderer on the stairs and uh, whoever did it went up to the roof and then disappeared. Hmm. Very well. We'll go take a look. Thank you. Thank you. No comments on my wings. Good. Well, they're going to give you like a side glance. But now's not the time. People yeah. are... Uh, I'm going to be commenting a lot about it. It's just like they said, not the time. So you hear the chink, 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 chink coming up the stairs. Uh, Soot will kind of stand away from any evidence and then, like, basically be at ease to not look like, <clears throat> you know, not like, hey, I'm the murderer, I'm just chilling up here. But just like, hey, I am of a guild. Um, uh, I suppose when I hear it, I'll also kind of peek over to double check to see that it's guards, and I will wait for them to uh, pop up before I say anything to them. Sure. Um, so you'll see one guard. Um, it seems maybe the other one might have stayed down with the other body that you guys have found, um, and he'll kind of just come up to the roof and, and look to you guys. We heard that you were fighters of the corpse. Uh, yes, uh, my guildmate I uh, was able to get up here expeditiously. Uh, I Fly. The, Yes. I and another uh, guildmate took the long way. We discovered that body there. Um, I was unable to find much of anything. However, there was a footprint that appears to be slightly ruined by the rain. I've covered it as best as I can. And is it your shield? That is my shield covering it from the rain. Yes. Okay. Uh, and... Uh, Real quick, break out of character. Caster, did you leave the like stole there, the little fluttery fabric? Yes, I, okay. I said I made sure to look at it, note it, not touch it. Okay, so we'll point that. Out. Uh, there is also that there. Um, uh, otherwise, I haven't been able to find anything. I've been trying not to touch anything. Um, is there anything I can do to to help? Hmm. Currently, no. But. You guys have done a fair amount. I would ask at least stay in the town for about a few hours. We'll probably catch up with you guys later on in the evening, just to kind of get this all written down. Uh, I, w I wouldn't say you're a suspect currently, but 
um, you know, I, I, I'm not personally the investigator. I'm just here on scene. Right. We, we have no, uh, no reason to leave town. Uh, you can easily uh, find us. We stand out a bit. Uh, but that's wonderful. I'll let you get your own covering, and then I'll take my shield back and see myself out for the professionals to do their job. He'll uh, he'll kind of walk over to what, what was that thing called? The the a parapet. The parapet. Oh. So he'll walk over to the parapet and kind of look at the the scarf kind of floating around, and you'll just kind of hear him mutter. So it seems we have a murderer of the church. Wonderful. Uh, meanwhile, outside, Caster will walk back to Martha, who I believe is now alone, or with Jason. I think she's with Jason. She's just sort of pacing, you know. I wasn't sure if Jason came with, so I was just saying, like, I think I think Jason might have, but um, I, I don't think Jason's really like he's not doing much. If anything, you you might see kind of like his pupils uh, slightly glowing, kind of like the detect magic that you really use. Yeah. But other than that, not much. He's staying quiet. Castor will notice that and look to Jason. Did you see anything? Nothing that uh, I can see for certain. Magic was used in this general area. Yes, but... enchantment and transmutation and illusion. Yes. Yeah. Working together, that's um, probably a uncommon to legendary item or spell. Invisibility and teleportation, perhaps? Maybe. The transmutation could also improve the fact that it could be on somebody um, rather than using it as clothing or anything like that. It could be affecting a person or entity. It's troublesome. Yes. <sighs> and about probably now, Macaster's wings would unsprout. So, Unless you're making them stay out again. No, you can close them up. Um, so, so eventually you'll be kind of released. Um, they'll have something to kind of cover up the footprint. Um, everybody uh, who is in the tower will be kind of sent down and out to the front. Um, Corey, before mm -hmm. Callisto leaves the tower, did she catch that scent of rotten eggs anywhere? All the way up. All the way up. Okay. And no sign of our... Anyone suspicious with that scent on them? The worst part is it seems to disappear on the roof. That actually okay, answers cool. a, a meta question I was going to have, so thank you. Okay, duly noted. I'll head back down. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, so we'll look around and like honestly finally notice that Zare isn't there. Uh, has anyone seen uh, our missing guild member? I don't think he left when we left. Okay, uh, let's go double check to make sure he's still there. Um, and then also I need to remember to bring him out. Uh, and then I guess we or are we done with the meeting? Did we have more to discuss? I, I can't even remember. Uh, I would like to bring up the fact that uh, our friend here has wings. Did we not discuss oh, that? I've never seen that before. I, I apologize. That's, I guess, not common knowledge, but that's something that we know. That's not like a secret, though there is news on that. Can we discuss that in the guild hall? That's fine with me. Yes, I, I, I can't promise truths that aren't mine, but Caster, we should talk about things. Um, and so we'll kind of be wetly jogging. Caster will, to... Caster will make like a, a face at you guys and be like, "Did I do something wrong?" Just, we'll talk about it. And, yeah. Just so you guys know, he didn't notice. He just he just sprouted him and flew up and he was completely like tunnel visioned on what was going on. Uh, Don't worry about it, sweetheart. Um goodness, this was unfortunate. Uh 
is is uh Zare back at the guild hall still? No, I've decided that I'm not there. <laughs> oh boy. I had okay. something to do with no explanation when you guys all jumped out. I was like, okay, what would I do in this situation? So unfortunately I'm not there. And yeah, but if you didn't I tell leave us. a note. You didn't leave a note? I didn't leave a note. Find him, Callisto. <sighs> Find him, Callisto. <laughs> uh yeah, Callista's just immediately switching nose scent to because she would recognize <laughs> what Zer smells like at this point. Yeah, nerf, I mean, nerf. Yeah, yeah, try and find. Yeah. Glass. He smells like glass. So it, no, gonna... uh, quite honestly, yeah, because he was um, he was spinning glass last night. And really hasn't had a shower. Uh, so I'm rolling nature for me with disadvantage because of the rain. Can yeah, I there. do the Wait. like? So, so we're we're doing this upon seeing that Zare isn't there. So, Caster will pat uh, Callisto on the back and say, "Find him," uh, and give a guidance out. While Callisto is sniffing, so it will like stare out of the window of the guild hall and try to like get into Zare's mind space as to like what Zare could have seen. To be like, ah, oh, yeah, man, maybe Zare saw like a cool restaurant and was like, I'm feeling kind of peckish. And then, like, like that is, that's like Zare's, like, or Soot's idea. It's just like, okay, Zare just wandered off. Like, if we just figure out where he went, then that's fine. So, with the disadvantage, that's a three nature check? You can roll a d4 to add to it. Oh, thank you. Well, yeah. That's the make or break. If it's a seven, it's good. Slash R. Get him. Unfortunately so not. Five. It seems that the rain has muddled the scent. Uh, we'll I'll find him. Back on her hunt. I'll find him. Caster's going to cast a spell. And he is going to think about... Zerus pants. He's going to locate those pants because he has seen those pants up close before. Oh my. Zerus? Zerus, you're wearing pants, right? 300 meters? Um, yeah, I'm wearing pants. No, it's a thousand feet of me. So yeah, uh, yeah 300, that's 300, meters. 300 meters. Uh uh, yeah, yeah, like, he's not high. So I can follow this to find him? I think he's frozen. Think froze. Oh, did I freeze? Oh, yeah. you, you know, your, your face froze. Now you're good. Yeah, you guys have been freezing a lot. I apologize. This is gonna be, probably going to be a me light episode because something's wrong with my internet. Um, I said, um... Your location, your locate object spell um, points you in the direction of the temple where we had our meeting last episode. So, um, Zare's Temple of the Old Light, the kind of abandoned one. So, um, you're going to find him there, and he's actually... um, dancing in the rain um no literally he's dancing in the rain his uh, foot movements are rather rhythmic and precise and his upper body is more flowy and it's uh quite a what would be considered in this part of the continent a uh, quite exotic dance um but also one of um reverence so, is his, are his eyes closed when he's doing this? He is praying through music. It, are his eyes open? No. All right. So, Caster will then basically at the tip of tip of his finger, basically casting it on and off, just to make a flash so that your eyes open up and he doesn't startle you. Uh, a light I'll, spell. <laughs> so it will just cast message and just say, uh, "We're all here uh, whenever you're ready." I'm 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 back. Sorry. Oh, so basically, between Caster and Soot, Ca- Soot sent a message spell, and Caster flicked 
the light spell on and off on his finger to alert you without spooking you because he didn't want to come up and grab you. Cool. Oh, he looks a little startled, but he stands up. He sees you. He goes, right, there are more important things right now. Um, uh, he's going to go like a wide-eyed nod to you, Caster, and quickly make his way back um, towards the wagon. And as he passes, passes you, he says, um, forgive me for not leaving a note. I just thought that I really need a shower too, so I thought I could do a two-in-one. That's... Uh, I, I'm sorry for not alerting you, to be honest. I, I wasn't thinking uh, properly. I need to... I need to work on that. I need to slow down in emergencies and not just run off. Especially if I end up leaving a teammate behind, so I'm sorry. And so we'll kind of bow at the waist um, at um, Zare. And he'll tap him on the shoulder, tap them on the shoulder, and um, say, I, I trust that everyone is fine, in, in our party at least. In our party at least, yes. We'll um, do that, a briefing at the guild hall. Relieves me. Um, I'm sorry I didn't leave an note. It just passed my mind. Yeah. Um, thank you for coming to find me, though. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no problem. I honestly just paranoia at, at this point and our own rules of not separating. So, uh, and that's through no fault of you. We separated from you, not from us. So that's on us to come find you. But I Gilfall, tried to find you for a second, but you were gone down the street so fast and I couldn't see through the rain and I just decided... Wow, this is refreshing. But I expect you have a more exciting tale to tell. Yes. Uh, let us go in the, the guild hall and we can discuss what all we found. Uh, mm. And Soot will... Actually, is there a fireplace in the guild hall? Yes. Do we conveniently have firewood? Maybe two logs. Uh, that's enough. Uh, Soot will start uh put the logs in and then just green flame blade poke the logs with a spear to start the fire uh okay um so uh first off let's discuss what just happened and then we can discuss caster moment if that's if that's okay that order a uh, caster again like he's looking around like What's there to discuss about? Like he he looks very confused and a bit offended. Okay, maybe maybe, maybe we should do his. Yeah, say. Alex uh, is waiting uh, to say. I, I was gonna say, bef you're good. Uh, before we start, Callisto in wolf form is just sniffing everyone, trying to memorize the scent of the party and like each individual member member, so this doesn't happen again. Martha gives the best behind the ear scritches. She is very pleased. Uh, whoops, that wasn't supposed to be capitalized. But, um, okay, so, Caster, I don't... Caster, do you want to explain the fact that you have wings first? Um, as much as I can. Um, as much as I can, I'll explain. Uh... I don't know. They just kind of happen. People have told me they're a blessing or that I'm the reason balance is gone. That's what Finn told me. Um, I don't know what they are. Zareth says they connect to his religion in a very substantial way. Um, I I just have them, and occasionally I get visions and of things to come, or things that will happen, or things that have happened. Uh, and uh, a voice speaks to me from time to time. But why, I couldn't tell you. And they're supposed to be bat-like? Castro will look confused. Excuse me? Yes, uh, your wings before uh, last I saw them 
were angelic and, and light, these appear to be quite the opposite. Uh, Caster will look concerned, and he'll try to summon them again, because unlike a uh, player, he doesn't know that his ability is a once per day. All right. So he'll try, but nothing happens, Corey? No. Um, I, I don't know why you, they'd be bat wings. They've always been feathery the few times that I've had them. Maybe so they didn't get wet in the rain. Let's just go with that. Like, Castor will, now, he'll, like, look down at the ground, and you'll, it'll, he'll kind of, like, furrow his brow a bit. He'll look quite troubled. Um, but he won't say anything more. Okay. Is that is satisfactory to you, Moment? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Just another strange thing that y'all have yet to tell me. I, I mean, I apologize for not telling you that. that uh, but a lot of this is kind of new and also old to us. Like, we know that Caster has wings, so we, we kind of forgot to tell you, but it is still something that we are learning about. I'm sorry as well, Moment. I don't like to... I don't like to speak about it or talk about it. I don't like that I have them. To quote a dear friend, he glows and shit. That too. Uh, okay, so let's break things down uh, based on my recollection. There are essentially three bodies, uh, two dead and one suspect that fled the scene. Uh, so let's start from the ground floor, body on the ground. What do we know about it? Um, I tried to heal him as best as I could. Um, I think I was able to ease his passing, but in his death throes, he told me that he had come here to complain about noise being made, and Castor will look very guilty. Um... And he said he was pushed from the top and he saw who did it, but he couldn't tell me before he passed. But I do have to wonder what he was doing up on the tower if he was looking for someone to complain to. It's strange to me. Uh, um, sorry, can I clarify for a second? Has there already been an initial like, recap? Oh God! For Zer's sake, I apologize. Or is, this, is this like all new, piece by piece for Zer? It, it, uh, it would be all new. Probably be all new uh, since I don't okay, say so it. Okay, so I have to wait. Moment. Okay. Uh, well, actually, I mean, Soot is kind of blind, but let me just do a little insight check to see if I can figure out what's going on. Except my character sheet shut down. Uh, okay, um, Callisto, I don't want to call you out specifically uh, out of character the, the body on the ground is the one that you sniffed i don't know if you were getting to that or if i was interrupting you or what okay so so it does not notice that uh uh Zare is confused sorry for being out of character i just want to make sure i i was going to say she's still in wolf form so she's oh, gonna yeah. wait you until can't. everybody's finished with their stuff and then if there's anything important that she feels she has to say she will speak up in Infernal, but she's okay. going to hold off. Okay, so that's all that we have about that. That's still something. Okay, so second off is the body in the stairwell. Uh, Moment and I discovered that uh, on our way up. I didn't get much information, uh, but Moment and Caster, what did you learn? Uh, you asked about what? Sorry. The body in the stairwell. What do we know about the body in the stairwell? Uh, she seemed to be one of the handmaids, but her um, her throat was slashed, and it was been about twenty minutes or so since it happened. There wasn't anything I could um, anything I could do. Okay, that long. Ago, okay, so that puts it possibly happening within while well, while we were there. Um, I, I hate to ask more gruesome details. You said her throat was slashed. Does it look like it was 
like a blade or a, a claw? What are we looking at? Corey, I rolled a 21 on medicine. What did it look like? Um, uh, it was, it was a thin blade, but I mean, it's, uh, it was sharp, whatever. So definitely a blade, not like a claw or a hand or a tooth or anything like that. Depends upon how sharp it could be. Um, wh whatever you know it was is that it was sharp. It was something very, very, very sharp. Okay. So probably a knife, but we can't, we can't rule anything out. Okay. And last but not least, I'm going to combine to um, the crime scene and the suspect. Uh, Caster, I hate to keep calling on you, but you are the first one on that scene. Uh, of course. What did, what did you notice? When I got up to the tower, I noticed there was a tabard, cloak, scarf, whatever you may call it waving about on the parapet and there was a footprint it looks to be about a size eight or so you know Cas you'll see castor is like looking up like trying to recall everything from up there um and he will you know he'll look up he'll take a second he'll pause um in the hallway when i came down and i i tried to see what magic was about maybe i i thought maybe it, whoever did it was who went back down the stairs and had cloaked themselves somehow. And I could use the magic, uh, their magic to actually locate them. But what I saw was a combination of um, transmutation, enchantment and illusion magic coming from there. And if Jason saw the same thing. He might be able to explain it better, what it might've been. I was more focused on tending to people. Okay, uh, now, did anyone get a good look at the suspect? I think at this point, Callisto will poof back to herself and just kind of sit there and then look at Castor and say in Infernal, I know what he smells like. Castor will, like, whisper in infernal back well what do you mean like what did he what did you mean what did he smell like well i got a scent of what the guy's hand smelled like oh. from pushing him off the suspect well, what did he uh, smell could like? you could you ask uh jason if there are any spells that he knows that use rotten eggs rotten eggs jason castor will say in common Yes. Do you know of any spells that use rotten eggs? No. I mean, there might be a few, but... Or something that smells like rotten eggs. Um... Sulfur? Could be sulfur. Do you know of any spells that use that? There's a few. Also, magical brews use sulfur as a small component. Anything that relates to that? What we saw? That's what the man smelled like. The one who It's a wide him. array. Excuse me? It's a wide array. There's more than one possibility. Um, could I roll a check on that? Maybe religion? Sure. Um, religiously, there are a few things that deal with the smell of software. Things like ghosts, um, certain kinds of potions... Um, certain items need to be imbued with, with sulfur. It's like a binding agent for magic. Anything that could relate to the magic that was used by that man who pushed him? I mean, again, it's hard to narrow down. Yeah. Castor will look to Callisto and kind of like give a shrug and like in Infernal, I, it's so broad. Jason and I can't figure out what it could be. With enough time and study, I, I might be able to narrow it down, but with such little clues, it's... Well, it would be a jump to say I knew. Yeah. Well, maybe it could help us, but I, I'm i not good at studying into magics. I just know what I know. If nothing else, I have the scent. So, I can recognize it later, maybe. Castor will translate that all into common for the rest of the group. 
Uh, that's fair, I suppose. Keep your nose open, everyone else. Keep your noses open as well, I suppose, if you smell something bad. Uh, well, I have a theory. Bad. Yes. Just based on the spell schools that Castor mentioned, the enchantment could be what lured the victim up to the top of the tower. The illusion could be whatever hid the suspect from the his prey. And I've seen stuff like this happen before when Callisto transforms. But if he transformed into something like a bird at the top of the parapet, leaving behind the cloak, that could be the transmutation. Uh, that all checks out, I, um, at least from what I know. I will say it's more likely that in the struggle, the victim somehow took the scarf off. Typically, a lot of those spells that let you change you, you what is on you kind of, you know, is part of it, as it were. Yes, uh, I suppose there is no way of knowing who the cloak belongs to exactly. I, I mean, it narrows it down. Uh, if it had the religious iconography on it, it's doubtful that many people would have that sort of thing, so that at least pulls the suspects. Although I will say that all of these things are obvious enough to the to the town guards. I, I don't know truthfully what more help we can be. Uh, I, I hate to pull this off the quest just like that, but you know we can keep our eyes, ears, and noses open. But I don't know how much more we can do. It might be better just to leave it to the guards. <laughs> I, and just to clarify everyone, we are once again, well, actually not once again, we are not suspects, but we are once again asked to not leave the town, which I figured is fine since we have things to do in town anyway. One last thing. I have a quick out of character question, if you mind me uh, intruding, Corey, and it's for another member of the party. Sure. Uh, uh, Dust, does moment have any way to speak telepathically? Uh, do you have a message? Yes, I do. And I can respond to message, right? Let me look, just be sure. Are you guys in, in the actual cart slash guild area? We're in the guild okay. hall in the living in the living area. Okay. So That's you guys will question. hear like a faint rain. Yes. Um so I just thought of this. Given Callisto's knowledge, and she had just heard, like, oh yeah, there might have been, he might have turned into a bird. Would she know with her druidic knowledge if sulfur is used for any particular spells in the druidic space? Um, they, they can be kind of used for a, a few ranges of things between transformations and... Um, and, and or things like um, like changing of visuals. So it's not just animals. It could be kind of like a chameleon type of thing, like um, hiding oneself as an object, item, other person, or such. Okay. The reason I ask is I, I meta knowledge as a DM know that sulfur is used for fire spells and also conjure elemental, which is why I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right. So I guess it's the same question as before. What's the plan now? I, sorry, so um I think our plan still needs to stay. We need to tomorrow speak with either the high priest or one of the other higher priests and see if we can't get Callisto's issue fixed. We need to figure out what's going on with Jason. And we need to... I need to speak with um, the local um, priest of Pelagos. Wait, what do you mean? What 
What do you mean by what's going on with Jason? That's why we came here in such a rush, Jason, because... Of... Oh, oh, my health. I thought you meant, like... Oh, because I had plans to stay. I was confused. Oh, no, we're just speaking of your health. Oh. I mean, we'd prefer if you stayed, but I, I understand why you want to stay here. Uh, also, we need to, uh, as Martha said earlier, we need to go and report our findings in uh, Wolf Pass Forest. Uh, and turn in our guild charter that we picked up. Hey, uh, uh, as for that, I'm going to do some research here, if I can, about any, uh, okay, that's my brain absolutely flushing out of my ears, uh, uh okay. Can I do a medicine check on what brain flushing out of ears means? <laughs> I, I can't well, remember what I was going to look up. The I have crystal. an important but out of character question, just to to set the pace and just to. I am under the impression that it must be like five in the morning at this point. It's relatively late, it probably around like three a.m. Midnight when we had our meeting in the temple. Yeah. Yeah, you said like three a.m. Yeah. Um. Okay. In character, I think everybody needs to have a a nice rest. All the libraries will be open in the morning that you can dream of, I imagine. Um, the guards will have concluded, or at least made progress on their investigation. And the shops will be open so I can get the remainder of that diamond dust that we need for Callisto's malady. Um, if none of you mind, I'm going to uh, take uh, Zareth's lead and enjoy the rain outside for a bit. We have been traveling for a while. And it might be wait. nice to rinse and clean myself off. Wait, 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 wait. That's not a shower, honey. That's not a shower. It's what we have, though. Yeah, if you have I... soap and get the soap sudsy and clean yourself, is that not a... Make I mean, sure you get I... all your crevices. I mean, I can use them <laughs> in the lake as the bathroom. Uh, you what? Also, don't do that. Don't get that close. Okay, so... Well, I didn't touch it. I just kind of arced it. <laughs> sure. Just go back in the... in the in the stables. I think that's probably safer. Okay. Unless any of you have a bucket that we can drill small holes into and put in one of our extra rooms here, then that will have to suffice for a shower for now. What's a drill? I'm not saying really? like an actual drill tool, but well, drilling they, is. A they still have drills. It's I, just I, drills. I know, I know. I'm just being stupid. Uh, it, in you just were waiting for your Calista. moment. Sorry. Sorry, go on, Callisto. In Inferno, Callisto goes, "What's a shower?" In Inferno, Castle will be like, "He'll look to her, and it's when you clean yourself off of all of your sweat My and." Um, the long travels of the day, basically. It's just a way to get so refreshed. What, so what's the difference between a shower and rain? Uh, one is natural, one so, is not. So it will interject in infernal. Yes, what he said. Oh! Hi, sir. You can cool. make you can I, make a shower out of like a bucket with holes in it and put water in it, and then it will pour over you. Duly noted. You can also heat the okay. water up and make it warm. Uh, I'll, I, I don't want to say I'll join you, Caster, but I'll do the same thing and then I'll head to bed, and so I mean, we'll just walk outside. <laughs> Alright, Caster will follow. I'll join. Just two guys taking a shower just together. Three guys. Two guys, just three two guys, guys taking a bed. shower together. <laughs> okay. Five feet apart. <laughs> uh, also, after showering, so we'll cover their arms with mud and then go back inside. Again. So, yep. So when we get back, I guess uh, Castro just pop a pop a bedroll down on the floor like he always does. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have beds, do we? No. By the way, DM, you said there's no food. She has a hundred I mean, pounds of cooking supplies in her cart. God. Uh, I mean, yeah, in your cart, but not in the guild room. She probably would have moved it in. Well, eventually, but like you, we hadn't roleplayed any of that or stated any of that. 
So we had time to do that. <laughs> That's that is fair. We've been we've been. I'm just I'm I'm not saying you don't have it. I'm just trying to stay canonical. Yeah. Um. So Guys the next morning. Light. Oh, I thought we were still doing bedtime things, but no. Go on. Well, I, I want to keep us moving. Yeah, yeah. Go on. Go on. Um. <clears throat> so like. You guys will have to sleep in a little bit more for a full rest, unless you guys want to roll constitution saves for the oh, next day. Didn't the woman at the crystal sh- store say that she opens at 11 in the morning? Roughly. And it's 3 a.m.? Yes. It was eight hours right there. I I hate to interject, but I'd like to have a scene with Arwen, if that's possible. Okay. Uh, specifically soot using soot's special sootness. The dream walking? Uh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> that... Roll me a 1d100. Let's see if you can tap into it. Sure. I cannot roll high today. I don't know if that's good or bad, but boy, I would love to roll a large number. Um... Let me roll something. I'd say you'd probably try. It's still fresh. It's still new. Um, but alas, for that night, I don't. I don't think you'll be able to. Then, then I've got nothing until the next day. The next morning, uh, after a good rest, uh, the rain will have stopped. Uh, there will be sunlight kind of coming through the windows. Um, you guys will hear kind of the birds chirping just outside. And it'll be a relatively uh, peaceful evening. Um, eh, I mean, you know, there, there seems to be a melancholy or a sadness throughout the town. Um, people are going about their business. It's just, well, there, there's definitely something that is troubling the people. Feel free to move about the cabin. I didn't like it when this place was all happy and stuff, but I don't think I like it even more that it's sad. They they have a reason to to be fair. There was a big I mean, tragedy last night, but but I understand it's eerie when everyone is happy, but it's also eerie when that's inverted. Hey Corey. Yes. Um. So I'll just repeat that. Hey, hey, Corey, uh, when we get a chance um, and out of character two as well, I assume that I more than more than just generally familiar with the high priest since he was the one who met me when I got taken in here. And he's the one who helped me kind of find my path along the way where I was going to pick. Yeah, I'd say he'd be pretty close. So I would, uh, I would like when after we can get the the ingredients, if I could bring Callisto with the ingredients to him. Ingredients for what? The restoration spell. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I'll just pick up the the dust actually for Zareth. Um. And uh, we can do that if you want to now, or we could, uh, if anybody else has a scene they need to get to. Uh, um, I just have that lined up. Martha doesn't have much she wants to do. I mean, she does want to go to the church eventually, but she'll go with everyone else and maybe go give the Mortabjorn shrine a good scrub down with a good brush. <laughs> uh, the only thing, so you part everyone because I believe other people research uh, I would go ahead and turn 
and that uh, quest, and then probably do uh, get the charter stance. So that way, <clears throat> since I'm a guild leader, and uh, Zayn wanted to do a few other things, we could flip into easier. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you want to go hand in the thing first, that would probably be quicker. Yeah. But you sound like you might also be having internet problems. Me? Yeah, you cut out a little bit there. Huge. Give me up. Oh, yep. One second, y'all. I'm sorry. All right, Corey. I can. We can start off with this. The the going to pick up the stuff and going to see if the high priest can do a spell for us. All right. All right, so Caster will uh, make his way down to where he knows Zareth picked up, which is still at, it's actually at the main church. Have you guys run into the uh, the main priest yet? Nope. Okay. So I'm I guess sure I wasn't forgetting something. Callisto, are you going to want to be a, a a wolf or an animal, or are you going to want to be carried? She is going to, for the sake of her pride and knowing that she can do it now, definitely be a bear. Okay, well, you know, Castro will walk close to you and make sure that everybody's like kind of aware that you're with them and you're not a threat. So he'll walk to the main church because that's where Zareth bought the uh, the diamond dust from. All right. And he will uh, meet with the woman he was told uh, by Zareth to go see. All right. A drow woman, correct? Yes. Um... I mean, there's probably a possibility that she even knows me. I only left, like, 20 days ago. Yeah, she'll she'll probably, like, if you say you were with the group, she'll she'll probably, like, have seen you guys through town. And uh, uh, By the way, what's the day? Uh, My birthday is coming up soon. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to keep up with everything. We've got so much going on, yeah. and everybody is split off in different places. Uh, she'll probably be the 6th. Six. Yeah, three you're days right. till my birthday. Yeah. So uh, it is yeah. the sixth of Solmora. Yep. I, I was actually going to say, would this be a scene that everybody else would want to be involved in, in terms of going to the church, getting it fixed? Uh, I would be along for the ride. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll be. Yeah, yeah would... actually, his heir yeah. should be around for that. He feels the need. That way, okay, we're all in one I, place. I would... I was just taking it over because you put that in the chat. Yeah, yeah, but uh, he'll be there. He just won't be doing the exchanging. <laughs> okay. So everybody's uh, everybody's going with, it sounds like, Corey. All right. Uh, heading inside, you guys will see kind of preparations for a funeral. Um, floats being made inside of the, the church. Uh, it seems as though they have something similar to like a, a Viking funeral. Um, uh, although they seem to be using some sort of arcing components to use some sort of like magical flame, uh, once it's been ignited into the water, um, you'll see the bodies are wrapped and prepared for burial while burning. Um, and they're just kind of sitting in the like three fourths made, uh, kind of floats. Uh, the gentleman you're looking at, uh, is going to have kind of. Uh, brownish hair with like silver flecks in it, uh, a gold beard, not a gold beard, uh, uh, like a silverish beard. Um, he's going to be wearing these, these white robes, very ceremonial, uh, a little bit of gold flecks inside of it. Um, he'll have kind of an aged uh, kind of face to him, but he still looks relatively young, but not, not too old, but old enough to be, um, I would say like uh, somebody of, of stature, somebody of, of memory. Um, he'll just be kind of overseeing uh, the whole funeral. Um. So, uh, Caster will come in. You know, he'll wait for everything, and uh, if he can find the woman afterwards who sold them the stuff. Sure. He doesn't want to interrupt. I'd, he doesn't I'd want to say... interrupt. The, uh, I'd say it, she would be pretty busy. Like, so it, yeah. there's not really much of a moment. You guys would go in. You'd be like, hey, look, I'm here to pick this up. And she'd be like, okay, it's just over there in that case. And then she'll be right back to work. Like, okay. not rudely, but they're requesting a lot of stuff from her. Yeah, no, he, he understands that. Um, so, 
I guess Ben Caster will, uh, you know, take a seat and pay respects and wait for everything to be done. All right. Because he's not going to interrupt this. That would be well, in taste. I mean, he'll 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 be kind of overseeing, so he himself isn't engaging in anything. Um, and it may be another couple of hours before they're even finished with this. All right, uh, then. Uh, uh, was somebody going to speak up? Yeah, sorry. I, is this like a, a late? Are we allowed to kind of like see the bodies, if that makes any sense? Uh, yeah, there are a few people that are they're kind of making their prayers, saying their last goodbyes. Um, it, it's kind of currently open like a wake okay. as it's being uh, built. I'll, I'll just say so we'll kind of set to the two people and slip a, a silver out into like if possible into each of their hands if not uh, on their forehead okay yeah it'd be pretty much allowed you'd also see kind of like flowers alongside of them like little tiny shards of Codius crystal or the sheddings of the outer side uh, kind of littered in the actual thing itself um, so it kind of like sparkles there's there's like an aura in this place that, that it's it's very pure like very basic um caster will approach uh high priest's barrister right yes and when he gets up you know he'll he'll bow slightly he'll be it um, it's it's been strange high priest hey that is open. Since I left, a lot has happened. These aren't the only deaths. There, there were more last night? But a week ago, we had two other killings. I, I tried to help the man who fell, but I, I was... It's only so much my magic can do. Hey, there is only so much magic can do. Speaking of that, you know, Kester's going to look down a little bit sheepishly, but then look back up and make eye contact. Um, my friend had... She had memories and other things taken from her by powerful magics. Mm -hmm. And I studied a bit, thought back to all my training from you and from the priest at Demeter. And I think a greater restoration spell might be able to help her. Yeah. We did so pro procure what we needed. Do you know who could help us with that? I can do that. She's... Uh, well, actually, hold on. Out of character question. Callisto, are you still a bear? Yes. She's the bear. But she just kind of lifts a paw and waves. He seems unfazed by this. She, um... She's normally um... not a bear, but the thing took her memories of learning how to walk and speak, so she can only walk when she's an animal. She's shifted. Yes. All right. Um, you'll see him kind of pull his robes back. On his right hand is a golden ring with a red orb on it. And you'll see him kind of rub his hands, a light shimmer kind of going across of it. Uh, and he will... She'll change back for this. Sorry. Oh, it's fine. She'll, sh she'll shift back to tiefling form for this. Cast will catch her. given time for sound specs. Um, yeah. when, once that's done, he will kind of uh, do a couple of prayers, uh, kind of clasp his hand, shake them. Um, he'll take out uh, like a flask of the crystal water and, and kind of shake it onto the ring and then shake it onto you. And then you guys will feel the spell. And you'll feel the effects. Uh, you'll feel kind of some, most of it come back. 
it's it's not all going to like hit you at once. Some of it's still a little fuzzy, but it's just to to not really like destroy your mind right away by shoving all that back into you. Um, but you will feel relatively back to normal. Okay. Do I get my common back? Yes. Okay. She's just going to go. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you. You as well. For what? It's not often I get to use my magic. Being high priest, they don't allow me to do much. <laughs> Which is why I'm overseeing instead of helping. You know. Yes. Um, and Cass is just going to like look to Callisto really quick. But then, he, you know, he realizes, you know, she knows all about this and he can trust her with this stuff and he'll look look to the priest or uh, to high priest again and he'll be like something else has happened to me um i don't know how to put this lightly but i can sprout ethereal wings being a half angel i would assume um what I did some study while you were gone. You are a half angel. You you knew this. I didn't even know this. I didn't know it until after you left, and I could do some research. Well, what does that mean for it me? It means you're you are constantly going to be in danger. You're um, an abnormality. The gods made a pact a long time ago not to have children. Um, you are in some way related to or have blood of a deity in you. That doesn't make you immortal. It doesn't make you powerful in any way. Well, it may give you some perks, I should say, but mm, it's uh, a very dainty thing. I would also suggest not telling anyone. And he's, he's going to kind of like be saying this to you, but he's going to be like keeping an eye out, like who else is around and making sure nobody's going to overhear this. And I, I was going to say the entire party's here. Yeah. I don't well, know if I they'll mean, join us with this part. I think Caster wanted to go like with you just to speak to the priest alone. So we're not, you know, eight people bombarding him at once, you know? I and I do with you, if that's okay. She wanted to ask him something too. Yeah, and that's fine. And we do also do have like soot over, um, kind of giving his farewells to the, the bodies, and yeah. So it's yeah. Um, do you per chance know who, what deity made me? Unfortunately, not. I um don't have that kind of research, and I. Don't have that kind of forethought. Perhaps Even with I, my gentle stone, there's nothing I could do. Perhaps if I tell you something, it could help you? Because I don't know all the religions as much. With more information, maybe? I might um, be able to help you? I occasionally, and he'll be talking in more of a hushed tone, you know, and looking around as well now. Um, I occasionally have visions. I'm assuming that's something to do with that. Yeah, this could be part of your divine features. Um, feathers constantly fall in them. There are a few deities that deal in certain symbols. Your best bet would be to be searching for those symbols, keeping an eye on strange or abnormal things through these visions, putting it all together yourself. Okay. You can only hope so much. All I know is that the voice that speaks to me is a male, and mm. there are feathers. I haven't seen them. You you left a little while ago, um, around the time of the crystal. Yes. We have received several burials of people who have become adventurers throughout this. Um, I think... We're about to see an unprecedented time of death. When your journey is over, we could use your help back here. Of, of course. Um, I've 
I've done my best along the way too, to help with burials and giving last rites and funerals. And I've taken everything that I've learned as a cleric of the grave and dutifully performed. It's okay, Garrick's still here. And I've dutifully performed when I could. Hmm. Uh, of course, I, I meant no. No, I disrespect I, I, her. I, I know you didn't. I I, w I will come back to help, and however I can. I have a feeling that uh, there is a lot in store. There's also been a shift in balance. The, the crystal, a few days ago, had uh, an event. Um, somebody has been brought back from the dead. Uh, and you know that that causes certain unbalances in the world. Um, more and more monsters have been seen on the roads uh, within a day or so. Uh, things have become trivial. I need you to be careful. We should go take care of those monsters. My group, um, there's any guild charters to do so. Do be careful. Of course. As you may know, you you know, you're gonna see Castor like look back to the group and he's he he looks takes a quick look back and he he you see he looks a little little sheepish and also a little bit embarrassed. Um you were the closest thing that I ever had to a father. Alex Callisto. Roll me in nature. Okay. So before you were um, kind of turned human, uh, there was a scent that kind of struck you. And it, and it kind of took a minute, uh, especially with your faculties coming back. Um, the priest ring gives off a sulfur smell. Oh, shit. Okay, I'm going to back away and move like I'm going to go hug her, which I was going to do. Um and go yeah, just immediately hug Zer and then hold him back and just mouth that might be our killer. Just gonna hug her back. And just smile. I'm I'm putting something together that I don't like in my head, and I no, I it's it's more than that. If he is the killer, in my mind, he thinks that that guy is the one who broke into the basement, and that's why he pushed him out. And so, not only did we put him there with our making noise, we also put him there by going into the basement. So, Pog. Um, that's not on fleek. Yeah. Um, that's just me be, um, thinking. Oh, sorry. Go on, Corey. Um, the high priest will, will kind of look to you. I'm not sure how much longer you'll be in town. Uh, there will be a celebration of life tonight, of course. You and your friends are invited. Plenty of food and drinks. Uh, there will be celebration. Um, potentially a ceremony. Uh, some few kind words and, um, you know, I will typically do the sacrifices of the givings to the crystal. Of course. Do you need help with that? Uh, I could use some help. Um, if you if you wish to help. Of course. I've been gone for a while. It honestly it feels good to be back. Okay. A lot of bad You can meet me in my happen. chambers in say four hours? Yes, I needed to go speak with some of the local priests as well. Okay. It'll just be a private uh, preparation before. Absolutely. Uh, I will see you then. I'm going to oversee uh, the burials, well, the burnings. Yes. Um, I think we all have to meet with uh, with people throughout town. But I think um, I think my friend here and he'll look down to Martha had something she'd like to ask you. Yes. I hope I'm not bothering you, sir. How may I help my... you a little less? 
Um, my husband is missing, and I was hoping, praying, that maybe this town with so much magic running through its veins might have some sort of sending stone or some sort of messaging. I could check the vault for you. Um, I can't make any promises, but we might. It's a Thank few you. items in there that might be useful. Thank you so much, sir. Caster will bow again. He'll he'll pull you into a hug. Oh, Caster, Caster will un unlike and much. Uh, you, you'll, the group will notice a growth in Caster, and he will hug back. Um, he'll now he's always showed some affection to you. Um, he's gonna kind of give you like a like a soft kind of like fatherly peck on the forehead mm. and pat your shoulder before he heads off to the uh, the burials. Caster will look very happy. Well, he seems nice. He took me in when my parents threw me away. Oh. Well, he's super nice then. I think so. Let's uh let's get back to the group, Martha. All right. You know, I haven't seen any posters of my husband's around. Maybe they've forgotten about him. It would be wonderful. Um, they don't forget much around here, but they... Like you saw, the rules of the town are quite lax. Yeah. Yeah. As long as he didn't go in the basement or be a dick to anyone, then... <laughs> uh, of course. All right, so Castro will make his way back with Martha to the rest of the group. And then he will also inform them that he does need to go see the priest of Pelicos. Callisto immediately is like, maybe you don't. Maybe you don't do that. I, for reasons. I don't, I don't go see the priest of Pelicos. He, oh, priest. Oh, sorry. I thought you just said priest. Um, still getting my ears back. Maybe you don't go see the high priest later. <clears throat> Costa, why you're being strange? He just helped. He just helped us, and he's taken care of me my whole life. Just take my word for it, please. Um, can we, can we talk about this? Like, uh, if you don't feel comfortable about it here, I would. Later. But I gotta. I, I need to help him with the preparations in four hours. I said I would. So, uh, oh, do me a favor. Yes. Uh, you, you're over by the bodies at this point, and uh, we're going to back date time just about like maybe four or five minutes. Roll me a perception, please. Okay, maybe I can roll double digits. Big money, no whammies. Maybe. Hold on. Yeah, Pop. double digits. 19. So. As you're watching, you're seeing people come and go. This place is uh, semi-packed. Um, the one thing that's going to strike you is is weird. So there's a face in the crowd that you're going to catch for about three seconds. And then it's going to go. It's almost like you're seeing doubles. There is the high priest who is over with your group of friends. And then you could have swore you saw him somewhere else in the back pews. Uh, but upon okay. blinking, he's gone. I am going to kind of like slowly walk towards the back pews um, and see if I see any sign of him there or him leaving the area or anything. I would say upon investigation, there's no one really there besides a the hand maining, prepping some of the... Uh, could he use crystal water? Uh, excuse me. Uh, I'm going <clears> to <throat> tap her <clears throat> on the arm. Sorry, I've got a frog oh. in my throat. Uh, yes? Hey, I hate to bother you. Uh, do you happen to see there, um, there is a man here, and I'll give the description guy. Oh, the high priest is over there. 
looking. Thank you so much. You. <laughs> and I'll just turn around and uh, walk off, kind of noting that uh, in my head. You'll just kind of hear, uh, kind of just behind you as you walk away. Silly. Silly. And most things people call me. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, all that I got. All right. Did we need a scene for Soot to get that guild charter re-stamped to turn the quest? Or was it possible to just set? Honestly, Soot did that on the way to the truth everyone. We, we could say you did that, like maybe while visiting, uh, because it would be the high priest, so it would be the gentleman that uh, Rodeo had met. Um, the only thing of note during that interaction would be he wouldn't have a book, so he'd tap the ring on his hand, and this this kind of like scroll... Of, of arcane note would come out and he would just do the paperwork through that and have you sign uh, and he would give you uh, money from the coffers. Oh. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> so we'll take a note of that as well and we can, we can just do that. Sorry, I just didn't want to clog up the ground too much with more scenes, but I did it anyway because my internet is bad. That's fine. You were saying something though when I interrupted you. Um, yeah, I had an idea, and I can't remember what I was going to say. Raise hand. Could Martha go and uh, clean off the uh, Mordebjorn? Is it an altar? It's not a temple. I know that. It's, it, it's a little shrine, yeah. You could do that. Okie dokie. Uh, Caster's going to head to the Pelicas shrine. Or... Mm-hmm. Small hut, whatever it was. All right. Religion time. Well, Caster's a little concerned now that he knows that his wings are bats. When a- after after uh, Max has his character seen, um, Zer would like to do a little bit of crafting, um, and I have a roll to make. Um, okay. Before next session. All right. It was supposed to happen last session, but I forgot. <laughs> um, are there particular scenes that we want to do at the altars? Oh yeah, I need to talk to the priest of Pelicos. Uh He is unfortunately not there currently. Oh, uh, he should be back soon, right? Uh, relatively like twenty-four hours. Um, Although it was twenty-four hours yesterday when I had viewed. Yeah. So he hasn't like returned yet. Plus, also we don't know if there is anything that could have maybe slowed his travel on okay. the way there. So. Well, Castro will put another, you know, like silver or copper piece in the the alms box. You'll see that that bird, yeah, kind of appear again. He'll sigh, and then he'll go and find Callisto because he has one thing actually he needs to do that he hasn't had the time to do. Actually. Roll me a perception. Yes, sir. Oh, boy, I'm decent at this. So you... Normally, you'll come in here, and there is rather decent smell. Um, you know, nothing bad, nothing... Um, but there is this, 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 like, rotting smell. Like... Flesh? Hard to tell. Um, whatever it is, it's rotting. Um, you could roll kind of a history if you've ever smelled rotting flesh before. Could I roll a medicine for that? Sure. With a 12, uh, it, it is rotting flesh. You can't tell if it's human or animal. I'm going to search around see if I can't find the the source of it. Give me a quick investigation. That one I'm not as good at, but I'll give it a shot. Nope. Three. Um, so, it is... See, this is going to be hard not to notice. That's, that's okay. the part. Um, with, even with a three. Um, you're not going to necessarily find it of your own volition. 
Uh, it's not going to be like, oh, I'm going to you know, go through the clues. It, it's more or less you, you feel like you're, you're on the trail of something, and then you look over, and there it is. It's not something that you yourself found out of skill. It's just like, oh, boom. Just stumbled into um, it. Yeah. Um, walking around the actual place itself, it, it's on the edge of the lake, and laying in the lake is an older gentleman in this, this large cloak with feathers all over it. And the skin looks blue. Uh, it looks like it's kind of decaying, and there are kind of flies buzzing around it. Oh, fuck. Uh, 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 Caster uh, is going to... A, I don't know who if anybody would have followed him or been close by him, but he's going to see that, and he's going to run and try to find a guard. Okay. We'll get back to this. Yep. Um, Martha, did you want to see at your chap? Uh, I think the dead body is more important right now. Go for it. <laughs> okay. Um, well, actually, I'm thinking about getting back to that next episode. Um, oh, is there anything else we wanted to do? Because I know we wanted to do a role for uh, Zer. Mm-hmm. Zerith. So I have just a couple of questions. Um, um, in order to do my crafting, which I will do when people go to their respective temples, um, I need um, money to craft with. So my first question is, what was our collection from the the uh, the high priests, the coffers? Uh, I can't remember what I quoted you guys. Uh, we'll say seventy-five gold. That's not too bad. All together or each? All together. I mean, you are taking it from a church. You might be able to, like, get a stamp or a a page where you could probably turn that into a different town for more. Uh, But I think, like, 75 gold will be all they have. And we can go that. We can go over that out of character later to kind of make up the difference. So, so just the important part. I guess when we receive that gold, I'll ask, um, does anybody have a, a little bit more gold that they could spend? I can turn it around and get it right back to you, but I just... Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, I thought if this was before we all split our ways, Caster would have uh, given you his two gold pieces that he found in his pocket. And uh, the three remaining that he was holding on to that was our leftover from when we actually first signed the guild charter. Um, as well that separate paper um, you could probably present to anybody in town and and kind of have them write off a certain amount so that it's like an IOU that you can kind of like a debit card basically Uh, and then you can have them speak to the high priest and have that pre-signed so that the new um, appropriate cost is on that sheet Uh, what what do you need how much do you need uh, Zer? Um, I need about uh, uh, 18 more gold to make maximum profit to, during this hour. I can give you nine. Uh, I'll give the other nine. So, there you, there you go. Yep. So... <laughs> Sorry, I missed that. That was funny, apparently. <laughs> I'm, I'm breaking up trying to say it. Um... As you guys are, are kind of having that exchange, uh, you, you'll kind of notice that Jason is uh, walking away from a couple in the throes of an argument, and she will slap him, not Jason, the other gentleman. And Jason will just kind of be uh, kind of counting a few coins in a bag uh, and kind of hear your, your need for gold. He'll contemplate a little bit, and he'll hand over the bag. Okay. It's about ten I, gold. Does Martha see this? <laughs> Martha's busy. Okay. He's free this one time. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna try to mark the face of of the woman that did the slapping in my mind. Keep it in mind just in case I see it later. If I do it's fate. But nevertheless I'm gonna proceed and I'm gonna go to the glass shop. Okay. I'm gonna make a few 
um, glass flowers that I, I can probably sell, or maybe wind chimes if those are more lucrative. Um, but in the end, I do need to make a mysterious roll for a very specific object. Um, if you don't remember what it is, Corey, we can talk about it after game. Um, okay. But I'm going to make a glass working check um, right. to finish off an item. And I'm going to take that because that's pretty good. It's a 22. With and I'll write, I'll write that down and we will, I'll message you after about right. what that might mean. Um, and then I'll rejoin the group. All right. I actually wanted to do something on my own briefly. Um, so Callisto is going to try and find a shrine to Tetra. Okay. Okay, so that wouldn't be difficult to find. No, uh, it would be very earthy, uh, moth kind of growing, moss kind of growing uh, on the sides of the building, kind of very, um, like, rose bushes kind of growing up pillars. It's very earthy. Okay, so somewhere she feels significantly more at home. Um, she'll walk in and not try and address anybody, but just sit at a pew. And for the first time in a very long time, she is going to try and pray. Mm -hmm. well, what for? Or just in general? Um, I mean, in general, but I think specifically, I have this knowledge how do I go about sharing it in the best way possible without damaging my relationships with people? Because she doesn't want to hurt Caster, basically. Okay. So well, 3D100, yeah? Yes. Um, you can go ahead and do that. I know that there is a scene uh, I had planned to do which will work well with this. That's a 39, 81, and a 36. You feel heard, but you don't feel like there's anything that can be done by her. Um, okay. That being said, it has been a short while since. Uh, but Caster, your eyes are going to glow. Uh, am I still with the group, or is this be when I'm walking alone? After you find the corpse. Oh, okay. Um, it, as you, as you kind of turn about three paces away from the body, you're going to get a flash. You're in a dark cellar. Uh, there is a gentleman in a cave uh, with like this red pupil, the eyes kind of looking from the other side of the bar. And you'll see the high priest. You have been causing me a lot of trouble lately. You realize that. Four people are dead thanks to you. I've had to make a few lies. To cover up your shit. I don't know what you're talking about. I've been in here for so long. <sighs> It'll all make sense soon. Just keep your mouth shut. I know someone has been in here to see you. And I'll take care of them personally. They're next. And... You'll kind of see the high priest pull out this bloody dagger and kind of like wipe the blood on a rag. And he's going to toss that through the bars itself. Little token for you to remember your place. You're not even supposed to exist, let alone interact with anyone. Keep that in mind. And you'll see him kind of rub this red ring and it's going to shimmer and he's going to completely disappear. And that I think is a perfect place to end it for the night. Da, da, da. Sounds like I need to watch my back. Thanks for listening to this episode. 
Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an upload and comment to help us bring more people to our story. A special thank you to Sirenscape, we use their technology and sound sets for all our music and sound effects. Check out the description to see precisely which sound sets we use this episode. Thanks, Kobold Press, as we use their monster manual to keep our players on their toes and listeners on the edges of their seats. Join us next episode to continue our story.